Let's now look at three diagrams to solve conditional probability problems. So the way this works is, essentially there's a sequential. So we have events A and B, for example, occurring. And we start off, first of all, let A occur or its complement occur, A or A complement. And after A has occurred, B occurs or B complement occurs. So this is sequential in this sense. So the way it works as far as probabilities go is that each arm here gives you probability of what's at the node there. And so this is probability of A. And this is probability of A complement. Now, of course, probability of A and A complement add to 1. So at any node, if you look at the sum of all the probabilities that, end, that actually originate from there, they should all add to 1. The next arm here, this is probability of B here, but A has already occurred. So this is actually probability of B given A. And likewise here, this is probability of B complement given A. And in the other arm here, this is probability of B given A has, A complement has occurred or A hasn't occurred. And likewise, this is probability of B complement given that A didn't occur. So if I look at probabilities along any branch over here, any arm, if I travel down that arm there, what I have here is A and then B happening. So this is probability of A and B. So this is probability of A intersect B. And I can calculate that by simply multiplying the probabilities along the arms. So the first probability is probability of A here. And the next is probability of B given A. So in fact, all I've done here is use the multiplication rule in this tree diagram to calculate probability of A intersect B. And likewise, the other arms will follow. For example, if I look at this arm over here, this is probability of A complement intersect B. So A doesn't happen, but B does. And the first probability there is that of A complement. And then it's times probability of B, given that A didn't occur, or A complement occurred. So likewise for the other ones. And the final thing I want to point out here is that if I'm looking at probabilities for events like probability of A, for example, from here, sorry, probability of B, then B occurs over here and over here. And all I have to do is add probabilities along those arms. So it's essentially it's this arm I've got over here and this arm I've got over here. So just add those up. So essentially you can see what we call here is the rule of total probabilities. B occurs when A occurs, so B occurs with A. or without A. So B occurs when A has occurred or when A hasn't occurred. And essentially all I have to do is add the probabilities along the arms. So it's probability of A times B given A. So as I've got the listed here, it's probability of A times probability of B given A. And then plus probability of A complement times probability of B given a complement. So there's quite a bit happening here, but all of this mainly hidden in the tree diagram itself, and you will see how problems are solved using this tree diagram very simply. It's a matter of finding all the available information in the question, and then populating this tree diagram with it. So let's have a look at an example here. If machine A and B turn off respectively 10% and 90% of the total production of a certain type of article. The probability that machine A produces a defective is 0 0.01, while that for machine B is 0 0.05. Now we know that A and B respectively turn out 10% and 90% of the total production. Now the question here is, what is the probability that an article taken at random from a day's production was made by machine A given the article is 40? The first thing in these kinds of questions is to define events. Now, there certainly are two events here. The first is that the article 
is produced by machine A and the second is that the article is defective. So if the article actually is produced by machine B, that means that's the A complement, isn't it? So A hasn't occurred, it's been produced by B. So express probabilities here, so what I know here is probability of A is what I had 90% there, I think. I'll go back for a second. I actually, 0.1, 10% is produced by A. So probability of A complement is 0.9, which is the same as saying that the article is produced by machine B. And it says machine A produces a defective article, probability of 0.01. That means an article is defective if it's produced by machine A with probability 0.01. And an article is defective if not produced by machine A, in other words, produced by machine B. And that's 0.05. <clears throat> so that's how that part is interpreted. For an article that's produced by A, probability is defective, is 0 0.01, and for an article that's produced by machine B, probability is defective, is 0 0.05. So I can populate the tree diagram here using information. Now the interesting, the important thing here is to just work out for yourself. I know I was two arms over here, that, and another arm over here. So what's going on over here? Do I put D here or A here? Well, the way if you look at the conditional probabilities I've got is D given A, so it needs to be A first, and then A complement, which is the same as saying machine B produces the article, and then the article is defective or not defective. So likewise here, the article is defective or not defective, and I know that 10% is produced by A, that goes there, that means the remaining 90% is not produced by A, or is produced by B. And then if I produce an article by a machine A, probability is defective is 0 0.01. And probability of an article being defective if it's not produced by machine A is 0 0.05. And since I know that probabilities at any node have to add to 1, that means that this one must be 0 0.99. And this must be 0 0.95. Now, the question asks me the following. It says, back again, what is the probability and that an article taken at random from a day's production was made by machine A given the article is faulty? So I know the article is actually defective. So what I know is this. And the article is defective, but I want to know the probabilities produced by A. So probability of A given defective. So always if you look at the question, it will tell you what's going on here. It says for example here that probability an article taken at random was made by machine A. So I want probability the article was made, was made by machine A, given it's faulty. So all I have to do here is use my conditional probability law. That's the prob probability of A intersect D over probability of D. Now A intersect D, you can see A occurs with D. A intersect D here is on the top line there, here A and D is that, that arm there. So that's going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.01. And the D part is in this top arm that I've actually circled plus this arm over here. So both of those. And you can see the top line is repeated on the bottom. That's almost always going to be the case. In fact, that will always be the case. And the other arm is 0 0.9 times 0 0.05 and if you do the calculations which I'm going to do on R <coughs> why would you use anything else but R for even these kinds of calculations what I've got over here is 
from the top line 0.1 times 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.1 times 0 0.01 plus 0 0.9 times 0 0.05 and I get my answer is 0 0.0217 0.0217 and that's how probabilities are worked out using free diagrams conditional probability problems so I'll leave that there there's some examples here for you to try and have a look at this um, and here is the answer that I've got over there or nicely written out for you now, here is the bank data again, another example here, and you can look through those yourself and do work on what's going on here. And I've got some conclusions here based on the probabilities I've calculated here regarding what's going on with the, the uh, uh, probabilities I've looked out here. The next is independent events, and we'll look at that in the next section. Thank you. Bye.